In this episode, we talk about my biggest struggle. Get excited because this is Tiny Leaps. Big G. Welcome to another episode of Tiny Leaps, Big Changes, where I share simple strategies you can use to get more out of your life. My name is Greg Clunas, and in this episode, we are talking about, uh, well, really, I'm, I'm getting a little personal here. I'm talking about my personal biggest struggle, the stuff that to this day, I still struggle with every single day. It's still a, a, a major part of my life. It's a major problem, and it's really holding me back from my own goals. But To make this a little bit more interesting for you, I'm also going to share what I'm doing about it and sort of the process I'm using to solve the problem. So hopefully you get some value out of this. But before we jump in, make sure you click subscribe wherever you are consuming this. If you have not checked us out, by the way, on YouTube yet, you're, you're crazy. You're crazy, boy. There is so much cool stuff going on on the YouTube, youtube.com slash Greg Clunas. I'm dropping every podcast episode in video format or every future one. Uh, and I'm also doing vlogs every now and then I'm doing just I'm, I'm tr- planning a bunch of really cool stuff for that platform. So make sure you head over to youtube.com slash Greg Clunas. If you haven't already, click subscribe there. Uh, we're in a race to a thousand subscribers. So would be super dope to hit that this month. Let's do it. So what is my biggest struggle? Um, yeah. So as it relates to my personal goals, my personal development, my self-help, all, all of the stuff you guys are trying to do, right? My biggest struggle is now and has always been uh, poor eating habits. And what do I mean by that? Well, I love KFC. I love Chinese food. I love Domino's pizza. I love a lot of foods that just are not good for me and um, they don't necessarily align with my personal goals around health and fitness. Now, are they bad foods? No, I don't believe in that dynamic. However, they should not be the norm and they should not be the, uh, the, the place you're starting from. It should never be, hey, I'm eating unhealthy and I need to convince myself to eat healthy. It should be I eat healthy and every now and then I eat unhealthy. All right. That's the the, uh, difference between the two dynamics that I think makes sense. But this has always been an area of struggle for me. And so the way that I'm tackling it, the, the things that I'm trying to do to fix this, and maybe it sounds familiar to, to many of you, maybe you struggle with eating healthy either through um, necessity, you're just short on time, you, you don't have the ability to, to really prep your meals or any of those things. Or maybe it's it's some of the reasons that I'm going to mention now where you just have poor habits and things like that. Uh, but make sure you stick around because I think as I share my reasons and more importantly, my approach to solving them, I think that you might be able to pick up some things for your own goals, whether they're related to eating poorly or otherwise. Um, So reason number one why I eat poorly and what I did was I really sat down and tried to identify what were the key drivers. Like every time that I cave, every time that I I decide to go out and get KFC, every time I go out and get Chinese food, like what are the factors going on that sort of lead to that decision rather than um, my ability and willpower sort of winning out. So reason number one for me is stress. So I'm a stress eater when I am anxious and stressed out and there's too much going on and I can't keep track of things and I'm freaking out. I tend to be more likely to convince myself to go just do the thing because why not? I'm stressed out. I don't have any time. I'm busy. I can't sit here and worry about like making a meal. Like I, I should just go get it. And or on the other side of that, because sometimes it's stress and I'm consciously doing it. Other times it's because I'm sitting down and I'm working from 7 a.m. until 4 p.m. straight and I forget to eat lunch and then now it's 4 p.m. So I'm starving and because I'm starving and I'm stressed out, I just decide, you know what? I need to just go get something. That's what happens. I'm either stressed out about something and I consciously choose, hey, this will this is what I should do or 
I'm stressed out and I'm working too hard and too long and I forget to eat and then desperation sort of takes over. Uh, and, and so for me, these are the biggest drivers. This is the, the biggest area. And what I like to do when I find that big area for my own goals is, OK, what can I do to reduce the, the, the times where this happens? Because if this is the biggest driver of that bad behavior, if this is the biggest thing sort of creating that outcome that I don't want and I can limit just this one thing, I can find a way to make this one thing no longer a problem, then that's going to put me in a situation where the majority of my uh, bad behaviors get eliminated simply because I fixed one tiny thing. And so I, that's how I thought about this list of reasons. And the first biggest one for me is stress. So what is my approach to this? Well, I've found that if I can build a, uh, a stress management routine into my day, then I'm in a much better position to make things happen. So for example, I wake up every morning, uh, every weekday morning, roughly at 5.30 a.m., I go to the gym immediately or no, sorry, wake up every morning, 5.30 a.m., drink a glass of water, go to the gym immediately, get back and I drink coffee while journaling or meditating or something like that, right? Now, why do I do those four things? Because those four things in that order, uh, at that time, I've found allows me to deal with more stress throughout the day and stay level-headed, stay clear-headed with sort of what I'm hoping will happen. Now, is this always going to work? No, uh, every routine fails. But I found that on the average day, if I wake up and I do those four things and then I start working uh, throughout the day, I'm able to stay level headed easier. And it puts me in a situation where the stress no longer causes the reactions that it used to cause. And again, this isn't all the times so that there's still plenty of failures, but it does help. And so that would be my first piece of advice for you. If this is one of the reasons that you engage in bad behaviors, if it's stress, then you need a stress management routine and it doesn't have to be in the morning. Notice I didn't call it a morning routine or a night routine or any of those things. You just need a stress management routine and that can be at whatever time of day makes the most sense for you. So that's, that's uh, thing number one for me. Thing number two uh, is poor habits. So I engage in eating poorly because I have poor habits. Where did that come from? Well, I grew up in a household where this wasn't necessarily a priority. I grew up with traditions and routines and, uh, and some of my fondest memories are of being a kid, getting Domino's pizza and KFC wings with my family, watching a movie at home, my sister, my dad, my mom, uh, any cousins that would happen to be around if my my extended my other siblings were around like whomever was there it, it's just like a big party we're ordering dominoes we're getting wings and we're just watching a movie and it like some of my best memories are of these times and some of my memories of my dad uh that that i cherish are of him talking about how he doesn't really eat domino's pizza while eating three slices like there is a lot of uh, warmth in eating poorly because it's sort of tied to these moments throughout my life. And so for me, what I've found to, to help with this, to solve this problem is that you've got to make a conscious choice because yes, like it, it, it just becomes unconscious, right? Like, oh, I have these amazing habit or amazing memories around these poor habits. And so I, I naturally gravitate towards those poor habits because they feel good to me. They're, they're associated with feel good things, with good things in my life. But at some point, I've got to interrupt that. I've got to come in and just cut that in half and say, OK, cool. I'm glad I have that memory, but I need to make the conscious choice to not engage in that behavior if it doesn't align with the goals that I have. Right. If it doesn't align. Now, does that mean I never eat Domino's? No, I do still eat Domino's. I do still eat Chinese food. But when I do, I make a conscious choice. And when I don't, I make a conscious choice. It's never about unconsciousness, which is the biggest uh, problem in, in most of our goal setting. So that's that's thing number two. Thing number three is um, cravings and addiction. See, here's the thing. Junk food is addicting. It's designed to be that way. 
It is designed to get you to come back, to get you to crave it, to get you when you hear the jingle on the ad or when you smell it or when you see the colors or any of those things like they they have manufactured addiction and put a price tag on it. It's true. And so what we need to do again, and, and this, this is it. It's repetitive, right? Because you you got to make a conscious choice. But what I've found to work even more is to add a consequence to that choice. And so for me, this came in the form and comes in the form of, OK, I will get KFC, but whatever that price tag comes up to the receipt, whatever that comes up to. I then have to log into my accounts and I have to do it right there. I can't wait because then I, I won't do it. I have to log into my accounts and pay the equivalent on a loan or a credit card or, or a debt or something like that. Right? So if I go to KFC, I spend $9.76 on a two-piece meal. Right? I then need to go and log into my accounts and pay $9.76 extra onto a credit card. Now, why does this work for me? Well, because it shifts how you think about the thing, the food. Because you might be able to say, oh yeah, it's only $9.76, like no big deal. But if you start thinking, is KFC, is a two-piece meal worth $19? The answer is no, absolutely not. You would never go into the store and spend $19 on a single meal. You just wouldn't. And so when you start to think about it that way of if I spend this, I have to spend double like that exact amount on some on this other thing. It creates a little bit of a consequence and you start to to associate KFC or whatever it is with the higher price point, the total that you're spending because it's triggered by it. Now, that worked for me. I don't know for a fact that it'll work for everyone, everyone else. That did work for me, though. Like it, it, it was painful the few times that I did break it and say, you know what, screw it, I'm going to do it anyway. But it definitely reduced and added sort of this moment in there where I had to consciously make a decision. And this is what it always comes back to is it's easy for us to fall into an unconscious routine. If we can interrupt it and add a moment in there where we are forced to make a conscious decision, all of a sudden the likelihood that we'll still engage in whatever behavior diminishes. It goes down by a, a significant amount just because you you interrupted the unconscious behavior and you had to choose, do I do this or not? So that is what is working for me. And before we end this episode, I want to sort of just break down what I did here and turn it into a process that you can use for whatever your biggest struggle is. So how do you fix your biggest struggle? How do you improve on this area? Well, for me, this is, this is what worked for me. Step one, identify your problem. And so for me, that was my biggest struggle is eating poorly. Cool. Step two, identify the why behind your problem. And this is my reason. So stress, poor habits, cravings, and addiction. Okay. Step three, find easy solutions to the problem. And so this was, uh, for stress, I built a stress management routine for my poor habits. I had to just make a conscious choice. And for cravings and addition, addiction, I added a consequence. And then step four, show up. And I know I say that all the time. I know it's the thing you hear all constantly, but I say it a lot because it's required. It's a, it's a requirement to make this work. You cannot change if you don't show up. You cannot change if you don't do the thing, do the thing. Make the conscious choice, put in the work, sacrifice, put in the effort, uh, take on the pain of doing the thing you know you should be doing. And if you can do it long enough, then it becomes easier to do it. Waking up at 5.30 a.m. every morning and going through that routine sucked. It was not fun for the first two weeks. And then the second two weeks were super easy. And now I'm maybe a month and a half, maybe two months in. I don't actually even know. But like I've lost track because it's not that hard anymore. It's not a grind anymore. It's just a part of my life now. So show up. So I hope this helped. If it does, 
Be sure to click subscribe wherever you're consuming this. If you haven't checked this out on YouTube yet, head over to youtube.com slash Greg Clunas. Click subscribe there. We are in a race to a thousand subscribers, which I'm so pumped to hit. So head over to YouTube and subscribe today. YouTube.com slash Greg Clunas. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment down below and let me know what is your biggest struggle. I would love to hear more about what you're doing to fix it and maybe even provide some advice if that's what you're looking for. So drop a comment comment down below and uh, let's have a conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, remember that all big changes come from the tiny leaps you take every day. Every day.